Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be making a load of cards using a gel print press. So today I was playing with my gel printing press and I'm using one of the small plates because I knew I wanted to make some cards with them. So this process is repeated over and over again so I'll just sort of talk you through it. It is going fairly fast but once you've seen it a few times you'll sort of understand what's going on. So I've pre-cut a whole heap of cards down to um, an A, A6 size just so that I can print on them. And all I'm doing is using some Dina Waitley Heavy Body Paints, not very much, brayering it out, using some stencils and pressing off the first impression out onto some bits of leftover card that I've got lying around or um, they're actually bits of um, encyclopedia paper that I've got. Um, I've got a whole encyclopedia that I use for gel printing so if I need to roll off my brayer or if I need to um, pick anything off my stencils I tend to go to those papers. So on this one I'm using some scribble sticks. I've just activated it in water and just using the end to make random dots in the background. And I'm just going to print that. I'm not putting a stencil on this one. Now these are the first prints. Some of them look great, some of them look a bit ugly. And you'll see I'll go back and add more and more over them. Um, there's no right or wrong way to gel print and you can do as many layers as you want. Some of these ghost prints that I'm using, these are the bits of paper that if you follow my channel that I use a lot in my collages, I just tear them up and chuck them into different collages or if I'm having sort of an artist block I'll just slap down some gel medium in the background and use those papers to add some interest. So I was really liking this doily type um, stencil that I was using at the moment. Again you can see me cleaning off my brayer because I knew I wanted to change colours to some brighter colours. <clears throat> so I'm going for the magentas and the yellows to see what I can do with these. Now one thing about using your gel print is if you're thinking about layering colours um, think about what's going to actually show up. So obviously the pinks are going to show over that blue really, really well and over the darker greens. So you just sort of think about what you're going to do. Now instead of using a um, piece of the encyclopedia paper to print off that first print with the stencil, I used one of my other proper prints, so to speak. So this is how you can sort of mix and match. And you can just keep playing. It's quite addictive. The one thing I would say, if you're having a gel printing session, um, to be really organised about it. Have your paints close by. Have some wet wipes so if you need to wipe anything up you can. Have your paper that you're going to be printing on um, already cut down to size, which is helpful, particularly if you're making cards. Um, and have some other papers around. It might be old gel prints, it might be just some scrap paper that you can sort of print over the top to get some cool effects. If you've got all that lying around, it makes what some people think is quite a messy process, I suppose, um, become quite fun because you can just keep going and keep adding and if you don't like something, you, you don't feel like you have to stop and get organized to get another piece of paper, you can just keep going. So um, I find, in, particularly in sessions like this, I tend to actually, before I start, make sure I've got all my paper cut down and make sure I've got everything kind of organized. It's totally not how I usually craft. It is a very, um, yeah, a very organized way of crafting that it doesn't usually happen in my house, but there you go. So again, that's the encyclopedia paper I'm um, printing off over and um, I'll use that to make the different layers over. It's quite therapeutic rolling out the paint. I quite like that process. So you can see I'm using the offcuts to of the paper I just rolled out and put, printing off the extra paper over the top. Now I've got a fairly good idea where I'm placing these prints so I can see them and they're mostly going in the same place. The good thing about um, particularly this size gel um, press plate but with most of them you can actually stick an acrylic block on the back and actually use it as a stamp so if you're really unsure about where you're placing it you could have an acrylic block up and then pick it up and stamp it on top you can actually also put them into your 
um, stamp presses if you've got one of those so because it is a um, sticky it will stick to the top side say of your Tim Holtz stamp platform and you can re stick that. I've stuck it down on my glass mat um, the reason for that is I know it's not going to move in anywhere. They're fairly sturdy that they're not really going to shift too much but I find that if I've got it down on the stick surface I just find it a lot easier particularly when you're brayering out the paint because it's not going to slide around and move too much so um, that's what I tend to do. So now I'm just going in with some texture tools just to add some different patterns onto my pages going in different directions. I don't mind it's gone off the page because I know I'm going to cut these down to size once I've finished. Um, they don't need to go over the entire piece either. You can sort of pick and choose how much of the print you're going to do which is quite cool. So I think this is one of the last prints I'm doing, if I can remember correctly. I think I do a bit of a cross hatchy type go on this one. Yeah. So these are the Dina Wakely tools, but any tool you've got, um, even just a paddle pop stick, just something to draw into. You can actually use an old pencil or something like that. Your scribble sticks you can draw into it as well. So there's lots of things you can do. So you can see I'm going back over and just adding some extra things, getting those final ghost prints off. And those are the finished pieces I've got so far. Some I really love. You can see the very first print I did, I didn't actually add anything to it. I'm really glad that I didn't. Um, others I layered over and I liked them when they were finished being layered. To add a little bit more texture and interest to these, I'm going in with some gold texture paste. And this one's from Creative Images, Creative Expression, sorry, it's an English company. But the um, Finnebear icing paste, all, all these sort of metallic texture pastes work really well. I like it because it just gives that instant little bit of shimmer and shine and pattern. I'm using a fairly open stencil to do this. Um, it doesn't really have anything to do with the stencils in the background, which I don't mind. It's just adding a little bit of extra something to the page. And it's gel printing is all about sort of doing these layers and creating something interesting on your page. So this is a new stencil I have. You can tell it's new because it's not dirty. I don't tend to clean my stencils very well. Um, and I quite like sort of the randomness of going from big to little and how that worked on the page. This one was a little bit wet. You can see I ripped up some of the paper as I pulled it up. The reason for that was I'd used the scribble sticks on that page and I hadn't let them dry enough. The acrylic paint, because it's going on so fine, dries actually quite quickly but if you add any other wet medium to it it tends to take a little bit longer to dry so just be aware of that. In the long run it's not a huge deal. Um, you can cover it over with paint or something or make it just look as part of the um, effect but um, I didn't really worry about it in the end. So just trying a few different stencils to see how they are. You can sort of see they're more sort of ge geometric patterns over the top rather than floral or designed patterns. Um, that's another thing that when you're doing your gel printing is have your stencils organized. I, I was actually organized this time and pulled out a whole heap that I thought oh yeah I might like to use those on my um, creations. In the past I've been in the middle of doing the printing and thought oh, I really want a stencil and then I've had to go search for my stencil so having those pulled out really helps as well. So on to the card making which I've sped up because no one needs to see me make and cut down a whole heap of cards and um, basically all I'm doing is just trimming off the edges. I'm not measuring, I probably should be measuring but I don't tend to measure very much when I'm doing um, my bits and pieces. So I'm just using the um, guillotine from Tim Holtz. Uh, this is a new purchase for me and I'm still not 100% sold on it. I understand the reason for having guillotine. To be honest, it's probably just an awful lot easier to pull out my craft knife and a ruler to do it. I'd probably be a little bit happier with how it worked, um, but it worked in the end. So I decided I was going to work on craft cardstock, and I was just trying to work out what I wanted to do. If I wanted to back it with black or just leave it um, plain. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So I'm just cutting down the black just to frame it up a little bit um, and to make it look 
um, like it's a pop it out from the background just that little bit more. So I'm just cutting a, a strip of black that's slightly bigger than the gel prints and then slightly measuring again not actually using measurements but just using the card to cut it down because that's all you need to do really isn't it. So when I've done that I'm just using my tape runner to tape it down but then my tape runner died unfortunately so I just got out the old tape. It's it's always a way isn't it you, you think you're speeding stuff up and in actual fact if you just did it the old-fashioned way it would actually take you less time in the long run so you can see my tape runner had this type of explosion I have no idea what's wrong with it so I went on to my thinner one which isn't my favorite to be honest but it worked for what I needed it to do I do actually really like having a tape runner I do find it convenient when it's working when it's not working it is a pain in the bum so um, they're just one of those things. The other thing I find is I struggle to get refills uh, in Australia, but we don't have a local shop nearby that actually stocks them. I have to order them online. So if you do have a local stop shop nearby that stocks them, lucky you. <laughs> so once I've glued them all down and stuck them onto my cards, I decided that I want to put a sentiment across it. And I did actually stick that one on completely crookedly, so I needed to peel that off and fix it and trim it down. And you can see I resorted to my craft knife because I just find it easier. So after all this is done, I one of the reasons I was doing the cards, I suppose, was I wanted to play with my gel press for our gel printing plates for a while, and it, if I pull them out I want to do a few things at a time. The other reason was I got a new set of uh, sentiment stamps and I've never really been a sentimenty type stamp person. Um, well sorry I have been in the, my past life I used to do a lot of card making I've really in the last few years stopped making cards altogether so I thought that if I had a whole heap of cards made up that that might make life a bit easier I could just go and grab some out so that's part of the reason why I did this big making session so I've cut down my sentiment strip which is just the white card I'm now cutting some black to mount it on because the white looked a bit funny on it just on its own um, to be honest if I wanted to do this properly I probably would have cut my gel print um, pieces in half and inserted the strip in between so I had the black there already but I didn't think about that at the time so uh, these sentiment stamps came from um, Simon Says Stamps so I got a biggish order from them recently which I probably shouldn't have but it was quite nice to receive in the mail and I was really impressed with how fast it came actually and it didn't the postage didn't cost the earth it was still expensive, but it wasn't as expensive as I was expecting it to be. So I'm just using my grid on my um, Tim Holtz mat just to sort of line it up and know that I'm stamping mostly in the centre and um, where I'm going to be placing it and then just taping the strip down the middle of my card or sort of towards the bottom, kind of working in um, thirds. So I it's sort of a big art trick to divide your page up into thirds and it kind of looks a bit even if you do that. So once I've finished that, just gluing them down the same way. So these ones are sort of, I'm forever on Team You, I'm so very grateful for you. Um, they're all nice, kind of positive, a little bit different um, than the usual sentiments that you would get. Now this is a card that had the Torin um, gel print on it, so I cheated somewhat and actually decided to go for a horizontal card instead of a vertical card. Sorry, I went for a vertical card instead of a horizontal card. Oh dear me, I've been on holidays too long. Um, and just reversed it, just so it covered up the most of that tear. I didn't mind the one at the top because it kind of blended in a little bit, so that was fine. So in the end I ended up with six cards I really quite like and they're all completely different. Even though they're all done in the same session, they're all completely different. And the whole process of putting it together took me about an hour to make six cards that are all completely different but using the same process. So it was actually quite quick in the end. 
and especially if you're using the same um, design I suppose for all the cards you don't have to think about it you can cut everything down to size beforehand and just assemble it so you could do it over a few sessions you know do your gel prints in one day do all the assembling on another day I just happened to have the time so I did it all at the same time so this is the final card so I'll give you a bit of a close-up of all the cards um, as we go along I hope you had fun watching this and I hope it inspired you to get your gel press print plates out. I know with Creativations being on at the moment, there's been a lot of press about the gel printing plates and a few different designers bringing some out. So um, seeing as many examples of how to use them, I suppose, is really useful. And hopefully, if you're a subscriber to this channel, you would have noticed that last week or the week before, because I'm um, putting this up, in the future um, I put up a big video on doing gel press um, image transfers which is a huge really fun technique to play with so I hope you have fun watching this and thank you so much for tuning in and until next time I will see you later bye